this Father's Day weekend, I've been thinking a bit about parenting. Not that I've had any experience in it from the standpoint of the parent, but as the one being parented. And I was thinking about the number of times when, as parents, you say goodbye to your children as they move from one stage to the next. And oftentimes, when you do that, there's some advice that follows it. So for example, the first time that they go off to daycare or to kindergarten or preschool, and you know that, that's a difficult letting go because you realize they're really growing up suddenly. But you might say, now remember, be good, listen well to the teacher, and then they go off to college and you give them a little stronger advice, perhaps. But I was thinking of advice that my own dad has given me over the years and the meaning that I have come to realize behind it. The first time that I think he had to let go a little bit was when I got my driver's license. Um, I didn't get a car. We didn't get cars until we got our first job after college. But that letting go of that dependency of needing to always wait for one of your parents to take you somewhere. And I remember as soon as I came home with my driver's license, Dad took me out and showed me how to check your oil, change the oil, check and change spark plugs, and to check all the filters. And then he said, no, don't ever do this. <laughs> but then he taught me how to change a tire. And he said, hopefully you will never have to do this yourself, but you never know when you might have to help someone else do it. And to me, the message behind that was a message that I was raised with quite strongly, of to always keep an eye out for somebody who might be in need and to make sure you're the person who steps forward to help them. Second time was when I went off to college. And I was excited and nervous, and I remember there was a big U um, where you, all the cars would drive up and drop us off. So my dad drove up, and I was just getting ready to get out of the car, and he drove off. We had to find the Catholic Church. So we drove around until we found Sacred Heart Catholic Church, and then we wrote down the mass times and the address, and then we went back to the college. And wouldn't you know, just as we're pulling up to the U, he took off a second time, because he needed to see if there was a shorter route since I would be walking to mass every Sunday. Then we came back to the U, and I waited because I knew he was going to drive off a third time. And this time, I had to tell him where to turn so that he knew that I knew how to get to church. And the message in that, obviously, was he wanted to make sure I went to Mass. But I think even more so, he wanted to remind me of the importance of prayer, of the importance of not letting go of the values that I was raised with, of the importance of realizing how important community is, how important it is to go beyond our own personal prayer life. And the third time was when I got my first job. And for the first month, I was living with an elderly woman. And I could tell that my dad was kind of upset about that. And I said, well, Dad, I'm sure she's a really nice gal. And he says, yeah, but she lives west. This isn't good. She lives west. And I said, well, I, I don't know what you mean, she lives west. Well, it goes, as soon as you find a place to live, make sure you always live east of where you work because you'll drive in the morning, you'll drive west, in the evening you'll drive east, and the sun will never be in your eyes. And I still follow that to this day. <laughs> but the message behind that was saying, not only we want you to be safe, but we care about you. You know, you're important to us. So I'm sure you can think of many examples of advice that you've either heard, either heard from your parents, your dads, or that you've given it as advice, and the special meaning that's behind each one of those. Jesus, in our gospel today, gives some more farewell advice to the apostles. And they must be kind of emotional because he says to them, I have so much more that I need to teach you, but you can't bear it right now. And when you look past at the past life of Christ, he was always educating and instructing his disciples by the things that he said, by the actions that they saw him do. And I can feel his urgency of saying, you know, oh my gosh, I want to tell you so much more before I have to leave, but it's probably been enough for now. But there's good news. The good news is I am sending you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will help you remember all of those past lessons, but also it will help you apply those things I've tried to teach you as you move forward in your own lives. 
the Spirit will be your advocate, the Spirit will be your wisdom, the Spirit will help you find truth. On this Feast of the Trinity, we're reminded of that relationship of God as God, Father, or Creator, who sent Jesus, his Son, as God into the world, and then gave that gift to the Holy Spirit, which is that burning desire, that love we have for God within us, that desire to truly follow him, to see ourselves as made in God's image and likeness, to strive to follow Christ and to make a difference in our world. And the great news is we are pulled into the fullness of that relationship, not only by our birth, but also by our baptism. And so friends, as we celebrate this feast of the Holy Trinity, let's think back not only to some of the advice that perhaps our dads have given us, but also especially to those ways where we have heard um, that call of Jesus Christ to follow him more fully and pray to the Spirit that we might indeed have the wisdom and the strength to do so.